I got 56% in my HSE, um, I know, great. Made it into university where I mastered in Space Invaders and Snooker and failed in accounting and economics. Um, yes, not that great either, so I dropped out after six months and became the male boy at the NRMA. You've got to have that mindset of bring it on. It's really important as an entrepreneur to have that resilience to be able to say bring it on because you've got to go the distance. The quality of your life is determined by the quality of the questions that you ask. You already know what you know. It's what you don't know that you need to be able to explore. Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of the Make It Happen show, where it's time for you to make it happen. And this one, it really is because we're joined by a special guest, Tony Nash. Now, Tony was one of the guest presenters at our MIH Summit a couple of weeks ago, where we had thousands of people online for one day. It was amazing. And Tony was really the presentation of the day. So he's the founder and CEO of Booktopia. And in this session, he really lifts the curtain to how he's built the business, his journey, and some of the key things he wished he knew along the way. A couple of times where he mentions the stories that he's never told anyone else. So let's get into it. G'day everyone, it's Tony Nash here, and I'm very excited to be part of this event. It's huge. Why? For me, because I'm talking to entrepreneurs, my favorite group of people to talk to, because we're all aspiring to do so much more with our, our lives, for our families, for businesses, adding value. And when Jack and the team asked me to be part of this new summit coming up, I said, absolutely. It's, it's my favorite you know, genre, favorite area to talk about. I know I sell books, you know, Booktopia. Books is part of our business, but it's what we do as entrepreneurs to make things happen is, is the key to all of us being in business. So let's take a few moments and talk about what we've done here at Booktopia. My background uh, was, um, was v is very esteemed. I got 56% in my HSE, um, I know, great. Made it into university where I mastered in Space Invaders and Snooker and failed in accounting and economics. Um, yes, not that great either. So I dropped out after six months and became the male boy at the NRMA, uh, delivering um, letters to people within the office. Um, I was the email system of the NRMA in the early 1980s. Um, and so, I also have been bankrupt. Uh, for those of you who have been there, you know what that feels like, you know what it's like to have hit the bottom. Uh, I have also um, been bankrupt. And a few years ago, I found, I found out I have ADHD. So I didn't know that I had ADHD, but when my son was diagnosed, my wife said, um, I reckon you've got it too. And I said, honey, you were right about, about uh, my son. So uh, that's, her step, that's her stepson. Um, and so off I went to the psychiatrist and he said, nah, there's no way you've got ADHD. He said, look at Booktopia, it's hugely successful. You're successful, very effective. He said, but before I make a final decision, could your wife come in? I'd like to have a chat with her. So a week later, we came in and sat down. And after about 20 minutes, he looked at me and he said, you definitely have ADHD. And, and that's basically, you do what you want to do and you hate doing the things you don't want to do. And so I have built Booktopia up with that that kind of background with my, with my schooling, no university degree, um, uh, bankruptcy and, and having a mental health condition, which uh, many of us have to live with. So um, I share that with you because I want you to realize that we all have something. We've all got backstory that could easily uh, give you reasons why perhaps you wouldn't want to be successful or can't be successful um, or it's, it's not for you. And, and I can assure you that is the furthest thing from the reality of being an entrepreneur and, and making your life the way that you want it to be. Okay, so we all have a reason or background why we may not be successful or can't be successful. Um, all that backstory that gives us the reasons uh, for why we may not be able to do what that person did or what you want to do. But I just seriously wanted to share with you my background because, um, you know, it's probably similar, maybe not as bad, um, maybe worse than yours, um, and it's not what I used as my 
uh, reasoning for being successful or not successful. In fact, probably um, it did, I, I was more determined than ever to, to make something happen in my life. And so Booktopia has gone on to be hugely successful, of course. Many of you would know who we are and what we've done. But it started off uh, without any big plan. It's, it was an idea that we had back in 2004. I started as, a, as an evening project on a budget of $10 per day. And the reason why we did that is because when I say we, I've been in business with my brother and my sister and my brother-in-law. So working with family is a whole other story, which we're not going to go into today. Um, but we have done that. And we, we had an internet marketing business getting people to the top of Google. That was our business. And we had got Angus and Robertson to the top of Google, which introduced us to the book industry. And so therefore, I'd, I used the same company that they were using to manage uh, their website and fulfill their orders to start Booktopia uh, myself. $10 a day budget, that's all my brother gave me. He's a very, very generous guy. Uh, imagine if he gave me $20 a day, what I would have done. Anyway, we, $10 a day, I worked on it from 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. every night, building my Google Ads, I was an expert in that, and it took me three days to sell my first book, and by the end of the first month, I had done $2,000 worth of sales, but by the end of the year, I was up to $100,000 a month, and by the end of two years, $200,000 a month. It was around year three, when we were, revenue was around $2 million, uh, we uh, decided to uh, part ways with that company that we used to start Booktopia, who managed our site and fulfilled our orders uh, that Angus and Robertson were using, and we built our own website, and we did our own fulfillment, and we, we went on our own way. That business grew, so about 2010, we were in 2,000 square meters in, uh, in Lane Cove, in a suburb of Sydney, and we had revenue of around $10 million. 10 years, 10 years 11 years on, uh, we'll do around 215 million in revenue this year. We have 14,000 square meters. There's about 220, 230 staff. We have about $12 million of stock uh, that moves around a little. We have um, about $22 million of automation. We have built our own website, uh, our own warehouse management systems, content systems. We bought Angus and Robertson in 2015. Uh, off the Americans, because when it went under with borders, uh, Penguin Random House, um, they were Penguin bought them, and now we, we can say we're 134 years old. Um, not really, but um, um, you know, we did that. And then at the beginning of last year, so beginning of 2020, we also bought uh, the university co-op business after they went into administration, and we did our first capital raise. We had achieved, a, we got to about 150 million in revenue, and we got our first investment in, in, 20, in 2020, and that was about six weeks before the pandemic started, and uh, the guy who invested, and he had a consortium of investors, was very nervous about uh, his investment, because uh, a lot of his, his investments were kind of uh, thrown into flux, but Booktopia just went from strength to strength through, through the pandemic. And um, it was about August, September last year when everyone realized that e-commerce was really shifting and moving, and and, and accelerating that we decided, let's see if we can do an IPO. And in December, after a three month, very fast IPO process, we got that away and listed on the ASX in December with a market cap at the time of 315 million. Um, today it's around 370 million. And on top of all of that, we've donated over a million dollars worth of books and cash to literacy projects in Australia as well, as part of our philanthropic program. So other than the capital raise in the last 12 months, most of that was accomplished out of the 10 bucks. Uh, we just continued to sell more books and use that money to reinvest, to hire more people, write more software, hold more stock, invest in the automation to get Booktopia to where it is today. So uh, completely unfunded uh, co and completely organic and therefore um, it's a true Australian success story. In particular in an industry, books, where everyone was saying bookstores are dead, the physical book is dead and, and that Amazon was going to annihilate you. So um, it's, um, it's, quite, um, it's quite remarkable. And if you think about all of those things and how the world was playing out and, and what was going on for Booktopia to have been uh, hugely successful, uh, what were we doing? What did we do along the way? And what sort of mindset did we have to, to go and take the path that no one else took? These are, this is just 
the, the way that you do things, the way that you operate. And therefore, I want you to know what I know so you can do it yourself. And to be fair, one of the things about being an entrepreneur, probably like being an elite athlete or anything, if you don't have it as your automatic response, then you will not be able to use it. We've got to think about it, we've got to sit with it, and we've got to learn what to do automatically in the moment. It has to be automatic. Now that comes over experience, being in business for many years. I've been running my own companies now for coming up to 25 years, so that's a lot of time uh, to develop uh, the leadership skills, uh, running your own, own companies, experience, and so, you, but it, you've got to understand it needs to be automatic, because if it's not, it's not going to happen in the moment, and you need that to be automatic. So some of the things that I want to talk to you about are going to be things that I want you to consider, and if you feel like it's right for you, then take it on board. Be, have it be part of you. It's not a secret. Use it. And that's what I did when I, when I learned all of the lessons and the courses that I did over the years. I, I invested in a lot. In fact, Robert Kiyosaki, the guy that wrote Rich Dad Poor Dad, I did some of his workshops in the early 90s before I started my own company. One of them is Business School for Entrepreneurs. It was in Hawaii at the time, 16 days. And one of the things he said to us is that the, the best investment you can make is in yourself. The best return on investment is to go and do a course, like the one coming up with Jack, go and, and the entourage, go and, do a, go and do a course because the ROI on you is bigger than you'll ever get on any other uh, investment. So, okay, now you know a little bit about my backstory and how I have absolutely no reason why Booktopia would be where it is today. You could have, you could have every excuse under the world to not, to not make it happen. Hi everyone, I just wanted to jump in here to let you know if you're enjoying this episode, it doesn't need to stop here. We've taken this episode plus all the other episodes and also video footage from the interviews and made it available for free. There's also a bunch of fantastic guides, tools and resources you can use to grow your business. To grab those tools, just go to www.the-entourage.com forward slash podcast. Right, let's get back into the show. All right, I'm going to share something with you now that I haven't shared with anyone else. It's only recent. What happened was before the IPO, uh, which is, um, th we're filming this now in, in February of 2021, and the IPO happened in December of 2020, so it's only a few months ago. About mm, two months before that, um, my CFO came in and sat down with me, and we were about three weeks away from going on roadshows to present our company to our investors. Uh, and this is a guy that had been with me for 10 years, from 2010, when we were on $10 million of revenue, right through to getting up to $200 million in revenue. And he said, Tony, I thought about you know, where, where things are going. And this is a guy who's in his early 60s. Um, I'm resigning. And my background before I, was, uh, b before I was in Booktopia and internet marketing, I was a recruiter for the computing industry. And personally, my, my philosophy around, around when someone resigns, I'm always excited. Because if they don't want to be working for us, where are you going next? I, I, it's about their career. So they came to my company, Booktopia or wherever, and they develop their skills so they want to move on to something else. They're adding more value to themselves, to their family, and to the businesses that they work for. But it did come as quite a surprise when he, when he resigned on that day. And, and so, um, because I really needed him on the roadshows, the CFO you need on the roadshows when you're preparing for doing an investment round, in particular for an IPO when you're meeting all the funds. And, and I said, okay, all right, what are you going to do? He goes, I'm going to retire. I'm not interested in being the CFO of a listed company. That's not for me. Okay, he could have told me a little earlier. Uh, that would have been helpful, but be, be it as it may. So everyone went into panic. My, um, my um, advisor, who was running the whole IPO process, was like, you know, we're stuffed, we're screwed. Like, you need a CFO, you can't hire a CFO. Uh, within such a, a short period, and uh, and I had we had had a lunch at our place the day before um, on the Sunday, 
friends who were around. And one of the guys who had retired, um, he was a partner at Deloitte's, and I was telling him about the IPO and how we were going. He said to me, Tony, if you, if you need me to help out, just reach out. I'm happy to just you know, you know, be there. Let, let me know. Okay, thanks, Jeff. So great. Anyway, I rang him the next day saying, oh, bit of a situation. Wasn't expecting to call you so, so quickly, but our CFO resigned. And um, he had gone into the city to pick up his wife from, from work and they were driving home and I was telling him the situation. And I, I basically said, you know, do you know anyone that could be the CFO? And, and he, said, uh, he said, oh, let me put my thoughts to it. And anyway, we hung up and she looked at him in the car he was driving. Honey, you can do that job. And he goes, yeah, I guess, uh, yeah, I suppose I could. And so he rings me back. He says, Tony, I think I can be a CFO. I said, we just talked a bit about his background, partner at Deloitte's. Before that, he was an accountant, had a lot of experience in mergers and acquisitions. And so I, um, I had had a conversation about 45 minutes before that with the guy who was running the whole IPO process. You know, we're screwed. This is stuffed us. We're going to miss the whole timetable. And I sent him an SMS and I said, I oh, found a CFO, all good. I get a message like, what, how, who, hit, what? Um, and and I, had, I had said to him on the phone 45 minutes before, mate, it'll work out. Relax, don't worry. Something will happen. You know, there's a, there's, a, there's a greater purpose. Now, I could have freaked out. I could have um, said, we're stuffed, we're screwed. But there was something about being centered. There was something about saying, bring it on. Oh, okay. You, you want another hurdle for me to jump over. I wasn't expecting that one, but if you want me to get to where we're heading, then I'm, I'm willing to deal with that. It's, it's happened time and time again over the years in Booktopia. You've got to have that mindset of bring it on. It's really important as an entrepreneur to have that resilience, to be able to say bring it on, because you've got to go the distance. You can't be writing and, and putting so much, so much energy into um, the journey that you're on. Otherwise, you're not available for your team, then for your family at home, for, your, for yourself to make great decisions when they're, when they're coming up, looking for the opportunities. This is one of the things. So I share with you that story about the CFO because it came um, completely out of left field. Uh, we weren't expecting it. And the guy that we brought on was the right guy. Um, from um, uh, for the business and and for the company moving forward and and so you know just remember that one one of the things um, that um, i saw in the promotional material for you know for the the make it happen summit is that you know what does it take to have uh, a business with seven eight or nine you know figures as to, in terms of your revenue we are on nine times already you know we're 200 million uh, plus means that we're already on, on a revenue of nine times. We were on eight times. We were on seven and six and five and four and three and so forth. So what is it about a company that's on nine times then? Because if you're aiming to go from six to seven, seven to eight, eight to nine, um, ten times, that's where I'm heading. My goal right now is how do I get from the hundreds of million to a billion that's my plan. What am I thinking about? What do we put, have to put in place? Uh, where are we based? Um, what sort of, you know, what, how does the company look to get to, to, to that 10, 10 time figure? But I, I will share with you something, which I don't, actually don't normally share, but I'll share with you um, something that happened to me um, a few years ago. My deputy CEO, who's, um, who's 20 years younger than me, a very astute, very clever guy. He's a CTO, basically built most of the tech with his team. He's now got 30 plus guys working for him, many of them older than him. Um, we had got to 100 million in revenue. And, and he said to me, Tony, it really feels like you're a bit absent. It really feels like you're, you've taken your foot off the accelerator or words to that effect. Um, maybe it was more brutal like Tony you're really slacking off or you're you know you're never here or something worse but what I understood was it was that um, I wasn't showing up the way that I used to show up and and when I when I thought about what he was saying which I you know which I normally would do when I get feedback 
um, I enjoy feedback, is that um, my goal for quite some time, I remember, I remember getting to 20 million in revenue. And we knew we were up for a, a new website, we needed a new, um, a, a new look and feel, um, we were, it was well overdue. And one of the ladies who was a designer who was a mum at my son's school, um, I, um, you know, I'd seen some of her work and I was very impressed. And I, uh, we engaged her to, to do the brand, new brand and, and upgrade the site. The brief to her was very simple. We're turning over $20 million. The new website needs to when someone comes to it for the first time and has never heard of Booktopia and you ask them one question, how much do you reckon, what do you reckon their revenue is? The answer has to be $100 million. That was the brief. So we wanted her to create something that, that kind of created the, 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 this place where we were going to end up. And so she did a great job and you know, we went on our way. We did many other things, but of course, that was part of it. And I realized that I had never reset my, yet. to get to 100 million in revenue was what I, those nine digits, to get to nine digit revenue was, there was some, I, I had mission accomplished. I never reset. And it took me a few days till it dawned on me and I said to him, you know, Wayne, you're right. I, I got to aim for 200 million. And, and so it just felt like, I don't know if you've ever ridden a bike and you're just kind of cruising along and it's and then all of a sudden it kicks into gear again that's how it felt like i just put if you've ever driven a manual and you just kick it into gear that's exactly what happened so um, i'm very horizon point driven everyone else has their own different ways of operating but i i very i fixate on a horizon point and that's where i'm heading and so therefore um, anything that comes up anything that we weren't um, expecting or not sure how to get there, it doesn't matter because I know where I've got to end up at. And, and so we got to 200 million. Now it's 300 million, 400 million, 500 million, a billion. So we've really only had a short amount of time today to, t to really scratch the surface of what Booktopia and I have accomplished over the years. The quality of your life is determined by the quality of the questions that you ask. You already know what you know. It's what you don't know that you need to be able to explore. It's like going traveling and finding, finding a great restaurant or a great museum or something that nobody else uncovered. And you know if you were to debrief, it was because you asked somebody something. And that's the same for business. Have a great week, have a great year, and I'll see you soon. Thanks for tuning into this episode of the Make It Happen Show. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. And it doesn't need to end there. We've actually gone and grabbed a whole bunch of extra resources for you. Behind the scenes footage, videos from this and all the other episodes, as well as show notes that you can grab for free. Just head along to www.the-entourage.com slash podcast and you can grab all those extra resources. Thanks for tuning in and I cannot wait to introduce you to our next guest on the next episode.